Hello, welcome back to this channel. I'm here to teach you what you need to know about building materials. You know, in a couple of uh, videos I've had in the past, I've showed some things, but this series is going to be specific on building materials. So if you are a student of architecture, you are a practitioner, you are someone who has interest in learning about architecture, you want to build, this video is for you. And I want to also advise that as you are about to start, you could go ahead and get something to take some notes because this is a class. My name is Architect Utige Aka, and I welcome you to this channel once again. As I said earlier, today's topic is on building materials. What's a building material? I, I wanted to take this down. Building materials refer to the substances or products used in the construction of structures such as buildings, bridges, roads, and other infrastructures. These materials can be either natural or man-made. And they are selected based on their specific properties, durability, cost, and suitability for the intended purpose. Common building materials include concrete, which you all know, and concrete, uh, as I said, two, wood, three, steel, four, bricks, five, stone, six, glass, seven, Plastic, eight asphalt, nine gypsum. These materials are not limited to these. They can be combined to make some other materials, which you could know them as composite materials as well. The selection of these materials depends on factors such as the type of construction. But let's go back to the basics. And the basics has to do with the origin of building materials. As we remember the definition that we say it could be either uh, natural or man-made. So the origin of building materials. There are two main classification of its origin and that is the natural and the man-made also known as artificial building materials. Under the uh, natural materials you have stone, you have timber, clay, mud and sand. While the man-made material ranges from cement, bricks, steel, glass, and lime. Building materials has a couple of functions, and I would want you to take these down. All right, I said uh, building materials has its primary it has its function and uh, the function primarily for some materials has to do with building the structure even though all of them has to do with building the structure but we have some dominant material for structure and the building envelope and number one under that category is stone back in the days if you look at the early civilization in egypt where uh, pyramids were built you had Things like stone being put together to form dwellings. And that's a primary building material. And we have another one, brick. You know, that's another primary building material. Even though the brick is not natural, it is man-made, but it is a dominant material for building and construction. Then we have timber. Now, you see people go around to bushes, to forests, and fell trees. And out of it, they saw it and they saw them in sizes or in logs and they use it as a major building material. Look at uh, some of the buildings that were built in the 18th century. Some of them were, uh, rather, in the 19th century, that's the 1800s. Most of them were of timber. And then another function of the materials has to do with making of mortars. Mortars is like it's an adhesive that you use to uh, put the materials together. So we have something like cement, we have lime, we have socky, and we have mud. These, these are mortars. Then, apart from that, there are other uses 
of building materials. They can come in form of aggregates. So in aggregates, we have what we call the fine aggregate and the quasi aggregate. These aggregates, the fine aggregate is what you know as sand, while the quasi aggregate is the gravel and the chippings, which come in different sizes. Another function of uh, the building material is for concreting material. Here, what would you consider? The basic concreting material is cement, aggregate, and water. Remember that aggregate is made of the fine aggregate and the quartz aggregate. So when you combine sand, which is a fine aggregate, with uh, cement, and you add your quartz aggregate, mix it all together, then add water. By the time you add water and leave it for a while, it sets and it forms concrete. So you could also introduce things like steel into it and it will give you reinforced concrete. But as we keep going, we will see how these materials are being used in the building construction. Other uses, uh, miscellaneous uses, where you introduce steel, as I said, uh, where you use iron, like your iron mongery, putting burglary, uh, aluminium uh, for uh, windows and doors frames. Okay, so let's look at the first uh, under the natural material. We are going to be looking at the building material called stone. Building material called stone. Stone is naturally available. It is very durable. Take this down. Number one characteristics, it is naturally available. Two, it is durable. And its durability spans to more than 50 years. Then it can, it can be used for construction without joints. So it means you can carve the stone. You know, the people, the ancient people carve their stones and you have massive stone, you know. Stone is derived from rocks. Are you getting the message? I repeat, stone is derived from rocks. And from the rocks, you have what is called quarrying. The process of getting this material to use is quarrying. And through that quarrying, uh, it is extracted into either smaller stones or it is being cut and dressed and polished as quartz aggregates. Then after that, it is now being utilized. I take that process again. You have rocks, and uh, you go and set up a quarry site there. And as you are doing that, you want to extract stone from that rock. But you must set up a quarry site. In this process, you can use what is called a dynamite to blast the rock. You know, then you take the stone from there, cut it from, uh, cut it into smaller sizes, dress them, and uh, you now cut it. To, to use it, to use it in appropriate sites. Dressing. What do you understand by the word dressing? Dressing implies by the process of converting freshly quarried stone of large aggregates or large size, which would be in rough and irregular shape, to regular size, which is smooth and regular in shape. If you don't understand that, let me take it again. The word dressing is a technical register. And this register, when you hear it in the site or in the quarrying site, it means the process of converting freshly quarried stone of large size, rough and irregular, to regular size, which is smooth and regular in shape. Classification of stones now i want you to have this in mind that stone is being classified based on parent rock and also based on chemical nature now if you look at this classification you have a geological classification geological dwells mostly on the parent rock where it's coming from its origin and uh, we have under it, rather, we have also in the classification, we have physical classification, meaning that you will have to look at how it appears 
and the chemical nature, you know, the engineering and scientific classification. Let's take this. Geological classification. Stones are classified under igneous rocks because uh, igneous rock is a parent rock that you can get stone from. And rocks formed by, it is a rock formed by cooling of molten magma that erupts during volcanoes. That's igneous rock. We have something called unstratified. It doesn't have strata. It doesn't have layers. Everything is homogeneous. That is igneous rock. And types of this. We have the platonic rock and hypertessal rock. Now, the platonic rock has deeper depths. Example is granite. The ore where this thing exists is deeper. It is below the ground. Igneous rocks are actually found below the ground. And we have the one that, that has shallow depths and we have the one that has deeper depths. And I say, platonic has deeper depths and example of it is granite. While the hypothesal rock has shallow depth. Example is dolerite. Then we have the third one, which is volcanic rock. Volcanic rock. Volcanic rock is pouring of uh, magma on the surface of the earth. I repeat that. Volcanic rock is formed by the pouring of molten magma on the surface of the earth. Example of uh, volcanic rock is basalt. Then, physical classification. Physical classification. Number one, stratified rocks. These are rocks that are layered and shows plane of cleavage. Example is sandstones and limestone. They are layered and shows a plane of cleavage. Number two, unstratified rocks. Unstratified rocks. Unstratified rocks are not layered. They are crystalline. Example is granite, basalt, trap. I take that example again. Unstratified rock is not layered, but they are crystalline. Example of it is granite, basalt, and traps. All right. Number three, foliated rocks. Foliated rocks has tendency to break in specified direction. Example of it is slate. All these are the physical characteristics of rocks classified by physical characteristics. Now, we look at the engineering and the scientific classification. Number one, siliceous rocks. Examples are silica, chemically written as SiO2, granite, quartzite, laterite. Number two, argillaceous rocks. It is made of uh, alumina with chemical nomenclature written as Al2O3. It is dense, it has density, it is soft and compact. Example of it is slate. Geological classification continued. We have sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks consist of igneous rocks after weathering and settling. Example of it is gypsum, gravel, sandstone, limestone. And we have the metamorphic rocks which change in characteristics of the first and the second. 
which is uh, a change in characteristics of igneous rock and sedimentary rock. Example of it is marble and uh, mice. Mice. G N I G N E I S F. Classification under engineering. We have the calcareous rocks. These are mostly rocks made of uh, calcium carbonates, and uh, we have it as it consists of calcium and carbon. It has high durability. Example of it is limestone and marble. Quarrying. The word quarrying simply implies the extraction of stone from the quarry. I think that again. The word quarrying simply implies the extraction of stone from the quarry, which is taking stone from the rocks. And there are processes or different ways of uh, doing taking stone from the rock. The first one is quarrying with hand tools. The second one is quarrying by channeling machine. Third, large scale quarrying. Quarrying with hand tools requires you to do the following digging, heating, and waging. While by large scale quarrying will require you to blast using dynamite, gunpowder, and gelatin sticks. Quantity of gunpowder or dynamite required in grams equals to L raised to power 2 all over, which is uh, 0 0.008. Now, look at this diagram. You see how the rock strata is uh, being infused, uh, dynamite is being infused into the rock strata and littered. And you know, the L there is the shortest distance of explosive from the rock surface and uh, when it does that blasting it opens up it opens up a channel for quarrying to commence that is breaking the stones out from the rock now let's move to the second material which is brick most of us when you hear bricks begins to sound a bit uh, foreign or alien maybe in your region you call it blocks but the general nomenclature for it is bricks are artificially made building materials. Artificially made building materials with naturally available material, which is clay. Brick, as I would say, is made from the material of earth. Composition of brick is we have first you consider the ingredients, you consider the percentage, consider the advantages and the disadvantages. So let's look at number one composition of brick. We have silica. 50 to 60 percent might be required. The advantage is gives shape and durability and prevents cracking and shrinkage. Disadvantage, excess use of this material, silica, will destroy cohesion between particle and brick, thereby making it brittle, weak in burning. Number two, we have alumina, written as Al2O3. 20 to 30 percent of it in your brick composition will give plasticity. Excess use of it will cause crack and shrinkage. Number three, lime, CaCO3. Basically not exceeding 5%. It prevents shrinkage of raw bricks. Are you with me? I repeat, lime, CaCO3, not exceeding 5%. It prevents shrinkage of raw bricks, and excess use of it could, it could make it to lose the shape and split the brick into pieces. Number four, oxides of iron. Five to six percent. First, it will give 
red color to the brick. Remember all these materials I'm mentioning, it's for brick. So oxides of iron, 5-6% to 6 required, and it gives red color to the bricks. It helps to fuse, it helps the brick to fuse with sand and improves the durability and permeability. But if there is no iron in your brick, what happens to the brick? The brick becomes yellowish. But excess of brick will cause dark blue or black brick. Number five material under brick, magnesia. A trace of elements of magnesia, 1% available, will, uh, the advantages of it is that it will decrease the shrinkage and yellowish tint. While excess use could cause the disadvantage of decay of the brick. This is important to note that bricks are made of bonds clear or a mixture of sand and lime. Bonds clear or a mixture of sand and lime. It comes in standard sizes. If you're taking it in centimeters, we look at 19 by 9 by 9. 19 being the length, while the 9 is the width and the 9 is the height. All in centimeters without mother. That's a standard size. The normal size is 20 by 10 by 10 centimeters with mortar allowance. The weight of brick is about one cubic meter. The, or rather, the weight of a cubic meter of brick is about 1,800 kilogram. I take that again. One cubic meter of brick earth implies 1,800 kilogram. The average weight of one brick is 3 to 3.5 kilogram. Harmful ingredients of bricks. Number one, the alkaline. It causes efflorescence. White powder, which is the white powder deposit on brick surface. This is very unsuitable for construction. I repeat, the alkaline causes efflorescence, which is a white powder deposit on brick surface, and it is very unsuitable for construction. Number two harmful ingredients of brick, iron pyrites. That's the decoloration and disintegration that you find on bricks caused by iron. Number three, pebbles and vegetable matter. If you find pebbles and vegetable matter on bricks, it will become more porous. And that means the brick will absorb water. On the other hand, it will become more strong. You see? So pebbles and vegetable matter could be advantageous. In any case, it could also be disadvantageous depending on where you will use the brick. Additives. Additives implies the additional ingredients that you add. Number one ingredient, there are about four of them, so I'll list one to four. Number one is the fly ash, the sandy loom, uh, ballast stone dust, and rice husk ash. This has importance of increasing the strength and durability of the material. Which material are we talking about here? The brick. Manufacturing of bricks. You know, we have uh, the different processes of manufacturing. We have the preparation of brick earth. We have the molding. We have the drying and the burning stages. I take it again. Manufacturing of brick is a process. And this process moves from the preparation of the brick earth, that is you take the clay and you mold it, then dry it and burn it. If you are asked to discuss that the manufacturing of brick, what you should be looking at is the process. Firstly, the preparation of brick earth, 
the molding, the drying, and the burning. But that is not enough because it has to be done in detail. Under preparation of brick heads, one, on soiling, what happens when you are on soiling? You remove 20 cm of the top soil. 20 cm of the top soil. That is 200 millimeters. 0 0.2 meters. Remove the topsoil. Why do you remove the topsoil? To eliminate the green vegetation. Number two, digging. Digging. Digging of the topsoil requires you to take clear from soil. I repeat, digging requires you to take clear from soil strata. And it is mostly about 60 to 120 cm when you have a place of a clay soil. Number three, cleaning. This is the process of removal of unwanted material from the clay. Now, by the time you dig the ground and bring it, you begin to put your hand to check it and remove all the unwanted material. That's if you're using hand. If you're using any other process, there is a process to that. But take note, this is under preparation of brick earth. So you look at this presented here. So number four, weathering. It requires about 15 days for it to weather. So what do you do in that, in that period? You expose it to air so that oxygen can come in. Then number five, blending. In this period, you're mixing the clay and kneading it. Number six, tempering and add required water and mix using pork meal. Pork meal is P-U-G meal. Now, when this process is completed, you move to the pro process number two, which is the molding. And in molding, we have two types of molding, the hand molding and the machine molding. For the hand molding, you require the ground and the table. But for machine molding, you can use the plastic method or you use the dry press method. Number three process, drying. Drying can be in two forms, either the natural or the artificial method. The natural method of drying goes thus. You expose the molded brick to sunlight and you stack it. While the artificial method requires tunnel drying and hot floor drying. Drying. The word drying in a brick manufacturing refers to the removal of moisture. Removal of moisture at a temperature of less than or equal to 120 degrees Celsius. Burning. This is still under drying method or drying process. Burning. You make brick to be hard and impact strength at a temperature of 600 to 1200 degrees Celsius. You know, where will you find such a temperature? That's why when you're doing brick, there is this furnace or this burner called the kiln. You use it because it is very hot. Number four process is burning. You know, in burning we have, is a temporary thing, but we have the clamp burning. And for the temporary, it's the clamp burning, while the permanent is the kiln burning. The stages include dehydration, number one of the stages of burning, dehydration, oxidation, and vitrification. Take note of this. The process of grinding clay with water and making it plastic is called pugging. P-U-G-G-I-N-G. -G -G. Size of bricks. We have the conventional or traditional bricks, the standard size of bricks. And uh, bricks carry, okay, in the conventional or traditional bricks, we have about 23 to 11 .4, 23 by 11.4 by 7.6 cm. You see the highlight on the screen. The standard brick is 19 by 9 by 9 cm. 
and the brakes carry frog of about 10 cm by 4 cm by 1 cm. All right. There are certain formulas that I would want to share with you when it has to do with calculating the number of bricks. Look at it displayed here.